Okay, so today I have this Durablo Spark to Pilot Valve with a smart um, controller. And I'm gonna go ahead and open this thing and install it and test it out and review it and see what I think about it. So unpacking it, we got our instructions. We got this uh, bag, red bag of washers, the smart fireplace controller and the big millivolt valve. Here we have a connector and we got a brass fitting. Taking a look through the instructions, the English on it is great. Um, the pictures and diagrams are very helpful and uh, hoping, hoping that the installation will be a easy job. Pilot assembly looks great. You have your pilot with the gas going down into the side and your sparker and your heat sensor. After unwrapping the unit, the, it's really good looking. The paint job on it is great. Um, it's organized in the back. The steel has a nice thickness and durability to it. Uh, right here, we have this uh, extra flared fitting and it's of a good design. That's just an adapter in case you need a, a bigger, looks like if you need to go from 3 8 up to a half inch flared, it comes with that adapter. It says here right on the front that the reading time is 5 to 10 minutes and installation time is 10 to 20 minutes. So I tend to read things as I install them. So I'm giving myself uh, 20 to 25 minutes and we'll see how long it takes me. The bracket is pretty self-explanatory. You don't need to read it. You just look at the picture and make it look the same. And it comes with some little washers and nuts. And I'm going to do my best to get it attached. I wasted a little time trying to get this nut and bolt onto this uh, with just my fingers, but there's a little slot that makes it a little tricky without needle nose pliers. So grab some needle nose pliers. It will help a lot for holding that nut in the right spot. Once you get those nuts into position, snug them up with your screwdriver. And there it is. I got this thing mounted on a little bit different than how it is in the manual, but I think this is going to be perfect. There's more than one way to do it. This is the little nut right here. It's tight in there. You're going to want a your needle nose pliers to hold onto that one while you thread it in. It's just too tight to fit your fingers in there. And I really like this design. It's going to hang over about a half an inch from the back of the burner. And it's got this part right here where it shoots the flame down for a quick ignition on your burner system. Now onto the back of the unit. If you just grab the battery housing, you pull it out. If it's too big, D batteries, it's just attached to it with a piece of Velcro. Um, it says do some high quality batteries, but I just happen to have on hand these super cheap uh, cruddy D batteries. And so we'll uh, go ahead and give it a try with these and see what happens. If you take a look on the valve, you can look in here and you can see where it says out for the gas flow and in for the gas flow. So really you don't even need the instruction manual, but right here um, on the manual, it does say the same thing. So this setup I'm going to use for the test is just as basic as you can get. This is just a half inch threaded uh, burner and a half inch gas outlet. Just standard guys. And uh, so here's the brass 90 that I'm going to use for the connection. I'll put a, put a brass 90 on the end of the burner here. Um, you probably have one or a straight fitting might have come with whatever unit you're using. Um, once that is on, I'm going to go ahead and tighten it down a little and put it back with the brass 90 facing towards the back. Um, now I'm gonna grab my uh, valve here and I'm gonna attach the gas outlet into the firebox. I'm gonna attach it to the where it says in on the back of the valve so that we have the right direction gas flow. And then I'm gonna use this uh, black flex tube that came with the set. I noticed it's a whistle proof flex tube. This is very nice. And that's gonna go from the burner to the gas out on the valve. And there you have it. The gas comes out into where it says in on the valve and then where it says out, it goes into the burner. Um, looks good. I'm going to go ahead and use this bracket, clip it onto the back of the pan. I'm sure this could be retrofitted on other units that didn't use the same kind of pan. Um, and then I'm just going to get this pilot light into the good spot. I think early on the burner, so closest to the inlet is a good spot. end up sliding it over a little closer to the gas source uh, with that bracket it's really easy to move around I like that with the valve installed it's time to move on to the controller portion of this so I'm gonna open this thing up and pull out the components and see what I'm working with looks like we got our manual controller um, we have here uh, I believe this is a thermostat like a, or like, or a heat sensor temperature sensor and then we got our power source to give the valve the power that it needs and we got this controller box so uh, I'll read some instructions and uh, then put it all together. First, I'm going to go ahead and plug it, the controller into the front of the valve. Very easy access. 
Next step is to go ahead and scan this code and it will take you to the Smart Life app. Um, go ahead and download that. These instructions are great. They show you the same pictures that you're going to see while you're using the app to make sure that you install the right software for the controls. It's easy step by step. Next, I'm going to plug this stuff into the control box and you plug in your temperature sensor and it says you want to keep that thing away from your fireplace just because you want it to measure the temperature of your room, not so much temperature of your fireplace and of course your power source. So uh, it paired with my device really easy. It starts out in Celsius, which I'm more familiar with Fahrenheit, but I cranked up the temperature and instantly it is sparking. So that's a good sign. Um, the gas is not turned on, however, so it will not get any gas flow yet. Now, the first time you do use this with the gas on, it will take a few seconds before the gas pressure can push out all of the air inside that pilot line. Um, once it does push it out, it should fire right up. So here we go, the app has this nice control feature. Um, you turn it on and there we go, it fires up, pilot light, and then boom, the gas comes on, it has great gas flow, and uh, there we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn my desired temperature down and it should shut off all on its own, there we go. And uh, wow, that's very nice. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do some heat testing with this valve and see how it holds up with the fireplace heat. So. I'm pouring the silica sand over the burner because that when the silica sand heats up, it really radiates a lot of heat and I want to uh, test this thing true to a real fireplace environment. So first I'm going to cover the burner in sand. Now I'll go ahead and place this steel grate over the burner, um, just like any typical insert. And I'm also going to place these large 7 inch cannonballs on top of here to simulate the ceramic refractory uh, gas logs that you might have radiating heat from your unit. Now I have about four to five inches of space between the unit and the edge of the log set, which is about a hand width. Um, and I think that's pretty typical for units like this. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up. And there we go. If you don't have adequate space, and I see this all the time because these spark to pilot valves are so big, if you don't have a good enough space, what you need to do is either downsize your unit or you're going to need to scoot it over to the side a little bit and make some room for that spark to pilot valve. Or you can try insulating it by putting a heat deflector shield in between your unit and your millivolt valve. That can make all the difference from your unit overheating. It's only been on for a minute, but I can feel the side heating up. Um, and right now you see this green wire. It's a temperature sensor that I put in there and I'm going to run it to my uh, temperature gauge. And I want to record the temperature in here in the batter around the batteries because if the temperature gets too hot what happens is the batteries stop producing volts and it can shut down your unit so i'm gonna leave this on for a while and see what happens with the temperature as this unit runs so far i'm very impressed with this valve and controller it it runs very very silently it's very quiet um it looks like it's doing fantastic. Um, I thought the temperature would raise a lot more than it has. Um, it's been running for a half an hour. It's a little too hot to touch, um, but the temperature inside of the box it has been staying much lower than I anticipated it was. It's only at 136 degrees after a half an hour. Um, and I think it's because of these vents right here. I think there's a little bit of draft in there that pulls in the fresh air out of the back and uh, keeps things a little bit cooler in there. I do think because there's no insulation inside, I can definitely see this unit overheating if it's too close to your logs. So you definitely want to put some kind of insulation or heat shield in between uh, the unit, maybe just a lean-to that just keeps some of the heat off of there. But for this setup, it's only getting to 136. I thought it would get much hotter than that. Um, and so, uh, I don't think this is going to have any problems overheating if your setup is anything like this. Little side note, I did waste some time trying to mess with the remote because I had forgotten to put batteries in there, but I did successfully pair it and the remote did work great with the unit if you don't want to use your smartphone. So overall with my review, I think this is a fantastic product, um, especially for the price. I'm going to start offering this unit with my products right away because it is pretty big like all of the other spark to pilot valves available. Um, it can be prone to overheating, so definitely consider keeping that space there and keep it towards the front of your firebox. And if needed, don't be afraid to put a kind of a steel heat deflector in between your unit and the valve. Good luck.